Of course, we all now know that this was a fire that started on the uh, dispensary, dry dispensary site, where um, a lot of staff, PPEs, and other <coughs> um, uh, stock was kept, and this fire uh, engulfed the entire hospital. Uh, I've seen that uh, the building has shown a lot of uh, damage, in particular the, this particular block, which is in the middle of the entire hospital block. Uh, they have estimated <coughs> that at this point, uh, you know, the level of damage no one can actually tell until the proper and thorough assessment has been done. But from the stock that there was, it's over 40 million uh, rands worth of stock, largely PPEs and other essentials. They have been able to evacuate over 840 patients within about a period of about 24 hours. Each building is built according to current uh, fire compliance. So at the time when this building was built, it met the fire needs of the time. When we do maintenance and when we do repairs and when we come in to address issues, we also make sure that we address them up to current needs. Now inside the hospital does have fire extinguishers. It does have a sprinkler system that does work. It was tested. Um, there is a fire hydrant system, but what happened on the day was the hydrant that they used closest to the fire, the fire COJ couldn't connect to that, to that hydrant and used an alternative hydrant. The CEO says there are how many hydrants here? We've got more than 160. 160 hydrants in the, on the facility. From the assessment that we've been able to do, visual assessment that we've been able to do, this, this, the structure does not need to be demolished. Uh, what is going to happen is that where the one uh, floor or the slab has caved in is going to be propped um, to be able to allow SAPs to do a, their internal investigation. Our engineers will then come to do a proper thorough structural investigation.